My name is Todd Gentile, and welcome to the module on, hey, that's your cue, transforms, transitions, and animations. And yes, that was an actual QML animation. This is a pretty rich topic in QML. Producing the effect you want can vary from requiring a single line of QML for a straightforward effect to a page of QML to perform something stunningly complex. Our first stop will be transforms. There are three basic transforms we will be looking at, rotation, scale, and translation. There is actually a base type named transform, but it's not a concrete type, so you can't create a QML element of type transform. You can assign any number of transforms to a single item. Without animations, transforms are applied in order, one at a time. There are many basic types of animation in Qt Quick. The basic type is the property animation. The principle behind most of the animations is to change properties and allow the user to see the item move through the intermediate values on the way to the final value. This is one of the definitions of a fluid UI. Instead of having items jump from one state to another, they move fluidly from a starting point to an ending state. Other animations inherit from the property animation, and they can add their own properties to control additional behaviors or limit the settings of certain properties. For example, a rotation animation adds an enumeration to allow you to specify the direction of the rotation, but its to and from properties require a real value, not a variant. There are multiple ways to control an animation. You can start, stop, resume, pause, and restart one animation at a time. You can group animations to run sequentially, or you can group them to run in parallel. You can use behaviors to define the default animation that should be run when a particular property gets changed. There is also a group of easing properties that allow you to specify dozens of curves that an animation can follow, from a simple linear progression to very complex curves. Various easings allow configuration of amplitude, overshoot, period, and even Bezier curves. The documentation provides nice curve examples of each built-in enumerated type. Here's the curve from the animation used in the opening slide. I'll show you an animation similar to what you saw in that title slide. This time it's using the default overshoot value of 1.70158 and a duration of 3 seconds. You'll notice it gets to its maximum overshoot position before half the time is gone and then eases its way back to its final resting position in the remaining time. There are some special case animations like parent animation that is used when reparenting an item and the anchor animation which is typically used in transitions with anchor changes. And if that isn't enough, you can animate along a path of your choosing, pause during a sequence of animations, run scripts during an animation, and set immediate property changes as part of an animation. We're also going to delve deeper into states in this module. You can use states as logic containers. States can specify changes for a group of properties, run scripts, override signal handlers, and perform reparenting and repositioning. And that leads us to transitions, which allows you to specify the animations to be applied when a state change occurs. You can mix and match and apply most of these techniques in an endless variety. I know you don't have an endless amount of time, so I'll limit myself to demonstrating some of the features that I think you're either most likely to use or that will let you easily learn the features I don't cover. We'll ease our way in without overshooting by looking at the straightforward transforms in the next clip. I have a new project opened with some code already typed in. Most of this is code you've seen before and I have a couple of properties, one for the border width and one for the adjustment to accommodate the border width. Then I have an outer rectangle with a black border. It contains a second red rectangle with zero height. This inner rectangle is anchored just inside the bottom and left edges of the outer rectangle. Then we have a number animation on the height of the inner rectangle. It's set up for a duration of 3 seconds, and it will grow the height of the inner rectangle to the height of the outer rectangle, less the borders. Let's run this. And we can see it fills at a pretty consistent rate. Let me switch over to Qt Assistant. I've done a search on property animation, and we can see the docs on easing from here by scrolling down, clicking on easing, and scrolling down a little more. We get a series of graphs and descriptions for the easings. You can see that the in cubic starts slow, finishes off fast. The out cubic starts off fast and finishes off slow. Let's go back to Qt Creator and take a look at all four cubic easings. I'll start with the in cubic. It starts off slow and finishes off fast. Now for out cubic. 
It zooms to about the halfway point and then crawls home. In, out, cubic. Starts slow, goes fast, continues fast, and then finishes up slow. Out, in. Starts fast, now it slows down, seems to almost stop, and then races to the finish. You can imagine that the other monomials exhibit similar behavior with different slopes to the fast and slow portions of the curve. Let's switch over to another example with something other than a rectangle. Let me comment this code out, and I'll paste in a little snippet that has three properties for setting a stopping point in height and width and the duration of the animation. Then I have a simple image object that uses a picture of a basketball. It contains a linear animation that just moves y from the default value of 0 to the bottom of the window. And if our basketball were filled with helium, that might be a pretty accurate example of how a basketball might fall. Let's try and make it better. We can start with a bounce easing. And that looks just the same. And you can see in the output window that I have an error unable to assign int to an easing curve. Remember that easing is a grouped property, so I need to specify the type property. Let me fix that. That's a bit better. Balls usually don't fall without spinning, so let's add a rotation animation and try that. A little nicer, but I think it will look even better if it moves laterally some. I'll add an animation on X. Looking pretty good. Let's speed it up a little. The basketball seems a little bit dead though. The rules state how much a basketball should bounce, so I've used those rules to empirically determine that I need an amplitude setting of about 2.5. And that's livelier. And the lateral movement looks a little too perfect. I'll try a sine curve easing on it. And that's not too bad. Okay, in the next clip, we'll roll into looking at sequential and parallel animations.